You change a city by changing a life. That's the motto of a counseling and mental health agency known as the Red Zone. Its founder knows quite a bit about changing your life. Former Ohio State running back Maurice Claret led the Buckeyes to a national championship back in 2002. But he staged an unsuccessful challenge of the NFL eligibility rules. He was mired in legal troubles, dismissed by the university, and then in 2006 jailed for armed robbery. Claret was at the height of athletic stardom and then the depths of despair. You might be surprised to see where he is today. Following blockers to the right, to the five, to the house, Maurice Claret, his second touchdown of the day. He had it all. So just imagine uh, you're 18 years old, and 13 months prior, you win every award you can possibly want to win as an 18-year-old kid in the world, right? You're the best player. And then you fast forward um, 13 months from that, and you win a national championship. He lost it all. When you have people following you home at 18 years old, when you can do what you want to, be it in classes, when you can walk around and there's no no to you, you know, so that creates a different reality. A reality that had him breaking the rules and then breaking the law. If, if I came and I just took everything from you, I took uh, your social status, your reputation, your livelihood, uh, and just everything, and you're not prepared, be it through character, be it through uh, just how to deal with life or be how to, you know, accept information, you're mentally going to be in a funk, right? And so what happens, uh, you, you lean back on what you know. And what I knew prior to playing football was just street activities, hood activities. Claret found himself in prison and as a high-profile inmate in isolation. The, the first seven months I spent on 23-hour lockdown, I think that was like one of the best things that happened to me. Uh, in isolation or the ability to read letters that people would write to me and say, hey, I was a fan, and, and this is what you meant to me. People wanted to see me succeed, right? They want their hero to be the hero. They don't want your hero to, you know, be like down and out busted, you know what I'm saying? And so, I, yeah, I rooted for you, so I don't want you to look like that. I, don't, I want you to be a hero and a role model to people. And now you are a hero in a different way. Not a hero, just, um, I'm just a, a, a man with dreams and visions. His vision was to build a mental health agency to help adults deal with drugs and alcohol, to run summer camps to keep kids out of trouble, and let even inner city kids know they deserve help for behavioral problems. And so I thought that, hey, if I, if I put myself and show kids, hey, you know, counseling isn't all about sitting inside of a chair and, and, and just being isolated and just spilling your guts, but there's different forms of therapeutic services. The Red Zone started in Youngstown, but is also operating now in Columbus. Claret has 150 employees, 1,500 clients, and a lot of Buckeye fans who identify with him in an all new way. Either a stressful situation or a mental health and drug and alcohol situation. And um, I become like a reference point to them. You know what I'm saying? Because somebody has somebody within their spectrum who has something challenging going on. So I become like that reference point and the champion for something totally different. Uh, but I appreciate them. You know what I mean? I, w I wouldn't be right here if I didn't have that support from people from Buckeye Nation. I, I, I literally wouldn't. Um, and I'm thankful for it. You know, th thankful and grateful. Uh, to even be in a space. Claret says it's not just Buckeye Nation that offered him that kind of support. He also gets that still from former coach Jim Tressel, with whom he's in frequent contact. As for the Red Zone and its services, you can get more information about that at NBC4i.com. Colleen, with that interview, what did you take away from the interview that perhaps you weren't expecting to hear? I was not expecting him to be so self-reflective and so so self-aware of what his shortcomings had been and how he has grown. He took all kinds of classes when he was in prison. He really took advantage of prison. And he says, I said, you know, you're really a, a shining example to come out of the prison system. He said a lot more people would come out of the prison system like this if they had the opportunities and the support that I got from Buckeye Nation. And so, he's very open about his challenges with very open, illness too. Very open with his, he's still getting treatment for mental illness. He gets up and runs at four o'clock every morning. He says he keeps his life structured. He uh, stays away from drugs and alcohol. He really is such an example for the people going through the program because he's been there. All righty. Thanks, Colleen.